Hello, BMFox here. Big news. Today, Call of War has communicated a unit balancing update for the railroad gun, as it's the new meta and too overpowered, so it needed a change. We are rolling out balanced changes to one of the most notorious units in Call of War, the railroad gun. With its combination of firepower, mobility and early availability, it has become a jack of all trades that makes building other units inefficient. To curb the railroad gun's early game power, we have split up into two levels. Level 1 is a weaker version of the current unit at slightly reduced build costs. Level 2 will become available much later in the game, has greatly increased build costs and requires a level 5 secret lab. With these changes, we are aiming to create some space for alternative build paths while preserving the unit's unique character as a wide-reaching, heavy-hitting king of artillery. Before we start, let's dig into history first. Of all the heavy artillery developed by the Nazis during the Second World War, the Schwer Gustav was the most destructive. It was a railway gun that was developed in the late 1930s, with the explicit purpose of being used as siege artillery to break through defensive lines. Okay, so the railroad gun was developed to breach enemy defenses, notably the Maginot Line. And so the railroad gun, it was never an anti-personnel weapon. Some of which had the strongest fortifications that had ever been built. Weighing just under 1,500 tons, two of these monstrous weapons were constructed. 1,500 tons. Tons. Can you imagine the sheer size? It's incredible. And only two of these guns were produced by the Germans during World War II. Schwerer Gustav and Dora. Which is why I actually advocated that there should be a production limit in Call of War games. I don't know, maybe 10. That would seem reasonable as it's the maximum amount of units that you can stack. Held the record for being the largest caliber rifled weapon ever used in combat. Barrel of the Schwerer Gustav was 106 feet or 32 meters long and it had a 31 inch or 80 centimeter caliber. It required a 250 person crew to prepare it for use. 250 person crew just to prepare it for use. Which took three days. So it took them three days to assemble this gun with a crew of 250 men. Further 2500 to lay the track ahead of it and two flak battalions to protect it from being attacked from above. So they needed a lot of manpower just to put the tracks ahead of it. Does this seem like a unit that you can use to shoot and scoot? It could fire 14 rounds per day at a distance of up to 30 miles or 47 kilometers. And so it could shoot 14 rounds a day up to 47 kilometers. So not one round every 30 minutes like in Call of War at a range of 110 kilometers, which is more than the double than it was in real life. Each one that landed was truly devastating. There was a choice of using either high explosive or armor piercing rounds. Both were just under 12 feet or 3.6 meters long and weighed up to 8 tons each. The high explosive variant was able to produce a crater 30 feet or 9 meters wide and deep. Jesus. And the armor piercing one could blast through 23 feet or 7 meters of reinforced concrete. 7 meters. Damn. The Gustav is more than six times heavier than the K5. It's over 155 feet long and stands four stories tall. Four stories tall, damn. It requires a shell weighing ten and a half thousand pounds. And in the spring of 1942, it becomes the biggest artillery piece ever used in combat. Capable of obliterating an enemy fort with just six shells. In total, it fires 300 rounds during the siege of Sevastopol. Small detail, after 300 rounds, the barrel needs to be replaced, which makes your railroad gun obsolete. But for all its devastating power, this super gun has major drawbacks. It had to run on specially constructed railway tracks. So you might need a couple of thousand men to lay the railway. Oh wow. Does this seem like a unit that you can move to the mountains, honestly? You needed several hundred people just to operate this gun. 
Not only does it need a crew of 2,000 to make it work, it requires three and a half days to assemble and can only fire 14 rounds a day. And it has an even bigger disadvantage. A great big gun operating on specially laid railway tracks is visible from the air. Of course. The Gustav is easy prey for the Allied bombers. Within a year, the Germans are forced to stop using it. So the Germans, they've stopped using the railroad gun already after one year in the war. How come that in Call of War we can produce it unlimited? I've suggested that railroad guns should only be able to be used on the railways or on infrastructure like it is the case in the supremacy but that was technically not possible another good alternative to nerf the railroad gun could have been like in a call of war classic in your capital and only in your capital you could produce commandos they could have done the same for the railroad gun for example although the call of war community made some excellent suggestions most of them are technically not possible and so Bytro has come up with the following. The railroad gun has become the optimal unit to build in most situations. We want to introduce more variety into unit build paths while preserving the railroad gun's unique character as a wide-reaching heavy-hitting artillery piece. To that end we are adding a second level to the railroad gun. The stats are here as follows. And yes indeed, you couldn't use the strengths to your doctrine anymore because if you didn't have any railroad guns you would get obliterated. Axis became the main uh, doctrine. Pan-Asian railroad guns also pretty good. Because they were fast you could outshoot and scoot Axis railroad guns even because you had the speed even though you didn't have the range. However for allies for example you can produce a railroad gun in only 7 hours but you lack the extra range of axis and you are 10% slower so you can't beat axis railroad guns. Impossible. And for the Cometern Doctrine, well, between axis and Cometern there's a 25% damage output gap. What can you do? And so the solution of Bytro is to make the railroad guns even sooner available. The research will be available at day 4 and day 3 for Access Doctrine. However, you still need a secret lab of level 4 and honestly, I don't see you building a level 4 secret lab in the first 4 days of the game. That's for sure. They have decreased the speed to 18. Just to give you an idea that is slower than an allies militia. The hit points have also been decreased with 25% and all the offensive damage has been decreased with 25 to 33% as you can see. For defensive damage the values are the same but divided by 4 and the production base costs has been decreased with 10%. Now the production time has been decreased with the level 1 secret lab it would take you 80 hours, now only 36. And with the four, level 4 secret lab, instead of 10 hours, you can produce it in 9 hours. Now these values are doctrine neutral, because of course allies can produce faster. And if you compare the damage output here with the screenshots that you can see of Axis, then you can see that there is a 15% difference, as Axis railroad guns get an extra doctrine bonus. So overall, you can produce railroad guns earlier, cheaper and faster than before. So I don't really see how this is a solution. Let's check out railroad guns level 2. Day of availability, day 14, day 12 for access doctrine. So there's a gap of 10 days for all the doctrines and 9 days for access doctrine between the two levels. You need a level 5 secret lab. Well, a level 5 secret lab at day 14 or 12. That is pretty realistic. They have increased the speed to 28. Hit points are increased. Damage out output is increased. These level 2 stats are better than the Axis railroad gun that we used to know. So this seems pretty overpowered to me. Then again, if you compare this level 2 base stats with the new stats for the Axis Doctrine railroad gun level 2, look at these stats. This thing is just a beast, man. I honestly can't see how this upgrade will make things better than they are now. However, they are making them much more expensive, about 30% more expensive from a first glance. But then again, if you do it like with other units and you spam a lot of level 1 units 
and only then you upgrade them, then you wouldn't be affected, right? So I don't know what this is going to give these railroad guns. To me, it feels like they have even made them more overpowered. But hey, who am I, right? Guess I'm gonna have to uh, test it. And then a final good news is that the bug is finally fixed that caused Pan-Asian planes not to take defensive damage when their patrol radius overlapped only slightly with hostile non-Pan-Asian planes because that was an exploit that was just too overpowered so thanks a lot for fixing that by true 